Hey everybody, Sean here from Board Paracord. Today we're going to do a paracord cross and we're going to be using the snake knot which is a, a real nice knot to use on this. Um, so using the cobra or the box, uh, the box knot, we're going to use the snake knot and it's real super simple. This doesn't use a lot of paracord, makes great keychain. You could also turn this into a necklace if you wanted to. Um, so what I've done already is I have about six feet of cord. Uh, six feet is about perfect. You can go maybe a little less. Um, maybe five and a half feet would work. But I've cut that piece in half. Um, so I have two feet, or I have about three feet of paracord that are both about the same length. Actually, they should be pretty close to the exact same length. So you can see I have that strand there comes down to here. So I have two pieces, um, each about two and a half, three foot. So the first thing I want to do is put my two ends together on the first piece. And this is going to be the top portion of the cross. Um, and we're going to have a loop at the top so you can put a key chain or key ring on it. Um, I don't have a key ring here, but you'll get the idea when we're all finished. So we'll have a loop at the top and then we'll have our snake knots coming down about this far. And then we'll have a set of snake knots this way to the left and another section at the bottom. So the first thing you want to do is find the center point and then you have your left cord and your right cord. You want to take your right cord, cross it over the left, just like this, and then around the back and down. So it's crossing behind everything. You now basically have this loop here with the cord inside of it and your big loop at the top. This is where your key ring will go. So once you get to this point, you want to reach underneath of your right cord and grab the left cord. Bring it off to the right. So you should have something that looks like this. Get down a little closer for you. And you're going to take that cord, this cord right here, and pass it down this through this loop on the left. And that's the snake knot. That's how you're going to do every one. And I always like to pinch it just to hold everything in place. <clears throat> Excuse me. So once you get to this point, you should have this loop at the top. And you should be able to pull these snug and while maintaining that little loop. And you can make this loop as big as you want. This is where you could actually make this into a necklace. So if you did like... I don't know, five feet for this piece right here. You could make this loop big enough to go around your head and be a necklace. But we're not going to do that today. We're just going to make this into a little key ring, keychain. So we'll leave, I don't know, you could probably get your pinky in there. Yeah, get my pinky in there. That's a decent size there. And that's one snake knot right there. And it looks the same on both sides if you flip it over. It's the same knot on both sides. And we're just going to repeat this process three times at the top three times on the right, three times on the left, and then we'll have six down at the bottom. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so you're always going to start with the right cord going over the top of the left and around the back and down. So this is the same as the first one. Now go behind the right cord and grab the left and this is going to go down through this loop right here. And we'll pull this tight. We got a lot of slack right there, so we'll get that. And you want to make sure that you're getting this knot as close up to this first one as you can. So I always like to kind of let it ride right on top of it like that. And then as you tighten it, you can kind of cinch. And what I'm doing is I'm holding on with my fingers here. And then these two fingers are pushing the knot towards the loop at the end. So I'm pulling with these. And then I'm cinching with these. And I do that on this side as well. And you can kind of see if you go back and forth, it tightens it up. And you also want to make sure, let me grab a little pointer here. Oops, there's my other cord. Let me see if I'm focused right. There we go. You want to make sure that you get like this little zigzag looking pattern here. So that means that this knot kind of sits in this little V right here. You want that to sit right in that little V. And it'll happen again down here. We'll have another V right here where this portion sits in. So I'm going to zoom 
back out just a little and we'll try and do one close up like this so um, your right cord over the left around the back and straight down and then your left cord behind the right cord and down through the loop and you want to make sure you're on the left side of this cord here you do not want to go down through the center because that'll throw it off. You want to make sure you go down through this loop right here. And then we'll just pull the slack out as we move this knot up. Just like that. And we'll get it to kind of ride on top as we do that. You can kind of see we're getting that little zigzag pattern going. There we go. Looks pretty good, and you can also flip this over to make sure you got that pattern on the back side as well. It should match the front. Yep, and we look pretty good here. Now this one might be, get a little loose, so you want to pull that tight. Just like that. So that looks good. And then we're going to set this aside just for a moment. We'll come back to this. And we're going to grab the bottom section. Now we're going to do the exact same thing that we did with the top except the loop isn't going to be like this it's just going to be kind of part of the bottom of the knot alright so we take our right cord over the top of the left around the back and down now one thing you do have to do here so that the loop doesn't pull itself through is instead of just taking this down like this like we were on the first one, you actually want to bring this cord through this loop which will lock this loop onto this piece here so that it doesn't pull back down inside. And then from here we do the same thing that we did before. Grab the loop underneath the right cord and go down through the loop here. And what this should do is lock everything in place and we'll still have the snake knot look to it but it's not going to pull this loop through. All right, and then we have to tighten that so that this loop goes away. So there, pull that tight, and you'll end up with something that looks just like this. And like like I said, this is going to be the bottom portion of the of the cross. Okay, so we have that now, and we just do five more snake knots. So right cord over the left, around, down, left cord under the right cord, over top, and through the loop on the left. We'll get this cord, or this knot moved right up onto the other one, like so. And pull it tight. There we go. So that's looking good. And repeat the process four more times. These usually can go pretty quick once you get the, the hang of them. I once did a monkey fist with a snake knot handle. And the handle is about two feet long. So that one took me a little while. It took me about an hour, I would say, to do that handle. But it was just a bunch of snake knots. Just like this. Just like I'm doing here. Turned out really nice. It's in the store, so if you ever get a chance to stop in the store, check that out. I have it on display just outside of Atlanta. So right over left, straight down, left under right, through the loop on the left. And was that number four? Yep, that's number four. All right, get that tight. Make sure we're looking good back here. It's looking pretty good back here, so I think we're good there. Try and make this look real nice. There we go. Alright. Right over left, straight down, left under right, through the loop on the left. Move it up. and tighten it down 
Real easy. And I did the snake knot um, monkey fist in the same color. It turned out really good. One, two, three, four, five. One more. Right over left, straight down, left under right, over the top, and through. So I used a two inch steel ball on that monkey fist. The monkey fist portion of it took me two days because I kept getting so frustrated with it I had to keep setting it down and come coming back to it. Those definitely take a little bit of practice. Just trying to get all the sides the same. Alright, so this is looking pretty good. Back side looks pretty good. And we have one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so this is where we're going to bring in both the top and the bottom together. So we have our bottom with our cords, and those are going to go off this way. Let me get my little sign out of here. And then we have the top, which these cords are going to go off that way. These are going to meet in the middle, just like that. Um, and then we're going to weave these two cords together this way and these two cores together this way. So we'll just turn this 90 degrees like that. And we have our right cord again, right here. It's gonna go over to the left, just like before, around the back, straight down. Left cord goes under the right, and down through the loop. Now this is where it gets a little tricky because you want to pull you want this knot to cinch these together just like that. So it's just a matter of working all the slack through. But once you get it, it should sit pretty nicely. And you might even have to go in here, pull this slack through like that, and then you can tighten it. So we'll get this first one done nice and tight like that there we go alright might have a little gap there alright so I'm going to do the, the right side but then I'm also going to come back to the left and do the first one on the left side so right over left around the back down left under right down through the loop Move this knot up and get it nice and tight. See, I'm having a little bit of a gap there, and I want that to fill in like that. So, what I think I'm going to have to do is actually grab my fids or one of my fid. And actually if you have a tightening tool this would be a perfect time for it. You want to figure out which cord you need to pull tight. So I want to pull this one tight to loose or to pull the slack that's right here. So I'm just going to go underneath of that cord and pull that until I can get that slack out. There we go. And this cord right here is this one. So I'm going to tighten this one and then tighten this cord, pull that tight. And that does a pretty good job of cinching it. So I'm going to pull that tight and do the same thing on this side. Just pull all the slack out, tighten it, grab the slack from this one, tighten this side. And you might have to go back and forth a couple times to get that slack. Flip it over. There we go. This is the hardest part. It's, it's real easy though. Alright, so we have two sections now. We have our top and our bottom combined, and we have our left and our right. And we're just doing three knots on the left, top, and right, and six knots on the bottom. So take our right cord, round and down, left cord under right down through the loop on the left, just like that. 
Oh, did I lose it? I was looking at the... I was looking at my... My camera. To make sure I was in the frame, I think. Okay, no, we're good. Alright, so we got that one. It's looking good. We'll do one more. Right over left, around and down. Left cord under right. Through the loop on the left. There we go. And definitely make sure you use three feet because I'm, I'm running a little short with this piece here and it's making it just a bit harder. I'm not saying you can't do it with two and a half, it's just easier with three. So start with six, cut it in half. There we go. And we'll do the right side here real quick. Right over left, around the back, straight down. Left cord under right, through the loop. Move the knot up. Tighten it. There we go. And last one, right over left, around the back and down. Just like that. Left cord under right. Through the loop. And we should have the last one there. Alright, and the final thing we need to do is... I wish I had a key ring I could put on here. I might have to grab one off of my keys just just so I have one on here. All right, grab yourself a nice sharp pair of scissors. We're gonna cut these ends off and seal them. So we'll cut this first one off and it's the same on both ends. We got four pieces to cut and seal. There's one. And make sure you have your smoothing tool. Great tool for this. Get that nice and hot and then use the smoothing tool to seal it in there. You can see it's a real nice clean edge. If you don't have a smoothing tool, definitely grab one of those from the site. Just go to par board paracord, type in smoothing tool, we'll get it right out to you. Smoothing tool and fids. If you don't have a set of fids and you're working with paracord a lot, definitely get yourself a set of fids. Those are great. Alright, and there's that side. All right, we have one more side to do. Um, we'll get this cut. And I'll talk about uh, the Facebook group. It's uh, facebook.com slash groups slash paracord on. It's the world's largest paracord community. Definitely worth checking out. Tons of people in there. I've seen this, this cross in the group many, many times multiple variations of this cross different ways of weaving it um, you can do all sorts of stuff with paracord and people do it all the time and you will find it in that group <laughs> people always surprise me in there so check that out it's called paracord on I like to post in there once in a while and I definitely comment on your guys's creations all the time in there so check it out and there will be, be a link in the description of this video as well. Um, but there you have it. That is the Snake Knot Paracord Cross. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you uh, try this out. It's real easy to do. Snake Knot makes a great handle for anything really. So until next time, Paracord on. Do me a quick favor and hit that subscribe button to your left. There's other great videos all the time, and there's a few to the right side of the screen, and you can also buy Paracord at our site with the link at the bottom left. Thank you again for watching.